What's up, everyone? This is Kyle with the Pallet Plug, the Pallet Business Database, where we are helping Pallet Business owners get listed online and help create an online presence for them. So today, uh, what I wanted to talk about was the tiers or totem pole, perhaps, of the pallet industry, kind of what the industry is made up of, all of these different roles that people take, and hopefully this helps people getting involved in, in the industry who are new to it or considering it, and uh, it kind of gives you an idea of all the different avenues that you can pursue, dependent on what you have accessible to you, the tools that you might have, uh, your financial status, your network as well is a very important factor to consider. So uh, yeah, just wanted to lay everything out for everyone and be able to kind of look at it like a menu and say, hey, I'm considering getting involved. Where can I get involved? How can I get involved? What does it take to get involved? So let's start out with the easiest, right? Palette pickers, uh, scavengers. I, th I mean, uh, you know, they have a bunch of different names, but pretty much what these guys are doing is they're going out and they're picking up pallets from different businesses that they might have relationships with or they might just know where they can go and pick up pallets that are set out in front of a dumpster or something like that. But what they're doing is they're going, they're picking up those pallets, and they're bringing them to another pallet company, a larger pallet company that has the ability to break down the pallets and reuse the material to make or repair pallets. Um, it's fairly simple. Like I said, I mean, if you, get, you got a truck, you got a pair of gloves, some straps to hold them down and hold them together to make sure that you're being safe because that's very important. Uh, you can do this uh, and, and things, things to consider is kind of researching in your local area where the pallet businesses are that you'll have to bring to, maybe asking them what their prices are and what sizes they take because not all of them take every single size. Um, so that's something to consider as well. Also, when building those relationships with those business owners, they might not let you take things unless you take all of them. So, uh, it's factors to, to consider when you're deciding to go this route, but this is fairly easy and simple way to get involved. You can make some, some easy money, I would say. You're, you're really just going and picking something up and bringing it somewhere and getting paid for it. Uh, just know what you're looking for. Like I said, do your research ahead of time. And that way you won't get burned because sometimes pallet businesses will actually make you pay for sizes that they don't take. So all things to consider. But like I said, easiest, simplest way to get involved with the industry. Um, your next option from there would be a sorter, which is fairly similar to a pallet picker. You're doing the same thing. You're trying to create relationships with people that you can consistently show up to and pick pallets from. Um, the biggest difference with these and a uh, pallet picker is they are going to only take the nicer pallets because they might not necessarily be selling to the pallet yard. They might have customers of their own in which they are going to be able to just take these pallets and sell to, or maybe they have to save a certain amount to create an order. Uh, like Say they have to sell 100 pallets, but they only know they can pick up 20 at one place and 20 from another. You get my point. So with that, um, they might also be looking for a specific size pallet, right? They might have a customer who needs a specific pallet and they're only looking for those. So they are sorting the crappy or pallets that are of a size that they don't need and taking the ones that they do. Uh, and like I said too, difference as well is they're not necessarily going to the pallet yard. They most of the time have their own customers that they are selling pallets to, but in the off time that maybe their customers aren't buying from them, uh, they might bring them to a pallet yard. So again, you kind of have to adjust depending on your situation, but those are two different roles uh, which people fill in the industry. The next step from there would be a recycling facility uh, or a pallet recycler. They're not necessarily labeled as that. You'll just see it as a pallet company. Um, but the biggest difference with them is that they are not manufacturing new pallets. What they're doing is they are just taking cores from, uh, you know, relationships that they've created, places where they have possibly drop trailers, which is a tractor trailer that uh, not the whole truck, just the um trailer portion of it and they're leaving it at a facility to then be filled with 
not necessarily all broken pallets. Sometimes they might be nice and reusable pallets, but they'll be probably a B grade. Um, sometimes A, it really depends on what type of business it is. But the biggest thing, like I said, is, is these companies have these relationships with these businesses. Uh, they have large facilities. They have tools. They have labor. They are well-established machines that recycle pallets. They break down cores, they rebuild pallets, they have massive stacks outside, and they have tractor trailers which they deliver those pallets with. So that that is a much higher cost of entry. Um, sure, you can start small. You can surely start out of your backyard with a trailer and a truck and a, hand, a couple of different hand tools to fix pallets. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and a lot of these businesses that have grown to the size that they're at have, have started out that way, quite honestly. And I know for a fact because I've, I've personally talked to the people who, who have done that and who have been able to achieve that. So <clears throat> it's not to say, you know, you're not capable of it. A guy that started out as a pallet picker, I know people who have moved their way all the way up to being their own recycling facility now at this point. So uh, don't think I'm saying these things to scare you and to deter you. I just want to lay out the facts so people know what they're getting themselves involved in and what options they have in front of them, depending on their skill level, financial position, and network, like I said, too, because if you know people that you can go to and sell on the larger scale, it might make sense for you to take the plunge to spend money on a facility and repair tools and things of that nature because you know that you'll be able to make that money back versus if you're just getting started in the industry and you don't know anything, the best thing to do is to start out as a pallet picker and you can start asking questions and you start learning from people in the industry. Go to a couple different warehouses, talk to the um, warehouse managers or the operations managers while you're there. Ask questions about how the pallets work, how they get picked up, how they get removed and purchased, all of those things. Because it's only going to help you in the long run make a decision on if you want to continue doing what you're doing. Uh, and, and again, go and ask the recycling facilities. What When you're there, like talk to the people there, ask questions. They might be willing to share with you. It depends. It's It's usually a you know, get in, get out, get your money. <laughs> That's it. <coughs> Depends, though. Um, so from there, the next step would be a, a new pallet manufacturer. And these are exactly as they sound. They are the ones who are making new either 4840s or custom pallets dependent on their facility, um, what manufacturing equipment they might have, uh, their access to wood as well, sometimes sawmills, which I'll actually leave that and I'll come back to it, but pretty much their relationship, right? Can they get wood for cheap? Uh, do they have customers that need customs or 4840s? Uh, at, while they are also going to be making new pallets, a lot of times these guys are recycling pallets as well, so they are both. They're, do, they're doing both. Uh, there's not many new manufacturers that will just make new pallets. Uh, they're doing something else, which is what I'm going to move into next if, if they are just making new pallets most of the time. Um, but like I said, new, new pallet manufacturers are also recycling pallets. Most of the time, for everybody in this industry, it's 4840. That is the size that most people are working with. So if they're new manufacturers, they're making 4840s, but like I said, they might be able to make customs too. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's, it really just comes down to uh, network, your ability to, to access product, um, how much money you have to get involved. And again, you can start small scale if you want to be a manufacturer too, but you're going to have to do some research beforehand, I would um I would say to ensure that you know what you're getting yourself involved in. Like, don't go out there and make new pallets if you live in the middle of nowhere because you might not have anyone to sell them to. So go out, ask questions, do some research, uh, check what kind of industries are within your local area, and, you know, be smart about what you're doing. So that kind of covers the people who are directly 
involved with and who are touching pallets on a daily basis. The other side of the industry is brokering. And brokering has its own kind of totem pole in itself in which you can get involved. Um, And I'll just kind of go over that now as well. And then individually, I can go more in depth. But brokering, you are either an independent contractor or an employee of the pallet business. And you're selling their pallets, plain and simple, right? You're getting paid. You, if you're an independent contractor, you go directly to them and you just say, hey, look, I want to be a pallet broker for you. Commission only. I'll establish my own price and you guys pay me out of what I'm able to sell the pallets for. Make sure you write up a contract, have something in place, and it just ensures that you get paid. But yeah, from there, you just go out and you kind of work for yourself for a little bit. Uh, If you want to work for the pallet company and be their salesman, saleswoman, um, you're more than welcome to do that as well if they if they want that. But it really depends on them and their situation. Um, And again, you're you're probably still going to be commission only, but it just might make getting paid easier if you're like an employee of the uh, pallet business. Another option for brokering is to be the guy that just sets up the conversation for people to be able to sell pallets. So you know pallet businesses, you have relationships with pallet businesses, you have something in place that says that you uh, contractually you know, can't screw each other over. Uh, and then on the other side, you go out and you find clients for these guys to sell pallets to. And again, you set your price with the pallet company ahead of time. And then when it comes to getting paid, they pay you. It makes the transaction easier for the purchase of the pallets um, for the company. But it's also easier for you and less work and no money up front where you're able to just set up these uh, selling and buying opportunities for these pallet businesses. The next step would be becoming like full service broker, where you are the one that you have the relationships with the pallet businesses, you're buying the pallets from the pallet businesses, you set up the freight and the logistics, and then you deal with the buyer directly. So it's all on you. Um, And so that's kind of as in depth as I, I will go in the brokering side of things. But I hope that this has been helpful and and informative in regards to the tiers of the pallet industry, how you can get involved, all the different ways. Um, Thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And please go check out the pallet plug. And if you're a pallet business, please consider signing up and getting your your business listed online. Take care. I look forward to hearing from all of you.